experiment, what you have to do is uh, to use this uh, quarter bridge, uh, Whitstone bridge, to measure the resistance of the PCB strip. Uh, since the uh, strip is not connected, so when you fill up this with water, uh, uh, the water will wet the strip and give some resistance. Uh, okay. Construct a simple circuit as in figure 3, you put a 5 volt and then put a multimeter across uh, uh, these two points and you have to look at the galvanic effect of this uh, node and the other node. When the resistance, the ratio of resistance R3 and your PCB strip is equal to the ratio of R1 and R2, there will be no voltage across uh, this uh, two point, these two node, meaning that you will read zero voltage here, then you know that the, the ratio is the same. So the first thing to do is to find what will be the suitable value of R1 and R2, so that when you make the measurement, uh, the reading that you get is not that sensitive to the fluctuation of the water level. When you take a very small value of R1 and R2, this thing will be insensitive to the uh, to the resistance of uh, your PCB strip. But when you put R1 and R2 values very high, then is this thing is too sensitive. So you have to find the right value for R1 and R2, and then you must get a good ratio of this. So the best thing to do is to use a multimeter and get some basic idea about the uh, uh, the resistance of the PCB strip when you uh, pour about half of the water level to the PCB strip. Using that value, then you will have some idea what will be suitable value for R1 and R2. You can make R1 and R2 to have the same value but when you have this thing, then the adjustment of R3 and also your uh, resistance from PCB will be uh, affected by the value that you choose or the ratio that you choose. Okay, once you choose the suitable value, then what you should do is to take some amount of water and you reduce this thing and you fill up the table and you make a plot. From there you can see the resistance of the PCB strip versus volume of the water. So you have some idea the volume and the resistance that you measure. Meaning that even if you put a water based on that you get some idea what will be the volume based on the resistance of the PCB. So you, you have the height and you have the area of this, then you know the volume, then you have some idea what will be the resistance versus the volume. That's the idea of the first experiment. In the second experiment, what you need to do is to have a, what you call as balance uh, with stone bridge. Again, you can choose any value for R1 and R2 and the value must be the same. Uh, please bear in mind that uh, any value that you pick from the bin will have a tolerance of 5 to 10 percent. So make sure when, with the value that you have, you have to uh, measure it uh, over and over again and get the closest match between R1 and R2. Again, when the resistance of PCB uh, of the strip number one and strip number two is the same, so the nodal voltage of these two must be the same. The thing is that when you pour some water, if you measure the resistance based on experiment one, you will not get the same value for a strip number one and strip number two. So the best thing to do this thing is to make some adjustment, meaning that you choose one value, the other one you varies in such a way that 
the value across this will be zero then you know that this thing is being calibrated so once this thing been calibrated now what you need to do is to increase this thing slightly so you should have a ruler they will give you some ruler or you use your own ruler and you move this thing slightly by measure uh, by, by knowing the height of the container then you can calculate what is the angle then you get the value of the resistance or the vo voltage across this node with the angle that you have based on that you can plot a table then having a few point having a nice uh, supposedly to be a linear graph then giving uh, given any angle to this PC, uh, to, to this container you by measuring the voltage across the thing you can estimate what is the angle that is the idea of experiment number two okay in experiment number three what you need to do is to give some suggestion on how to measure the volume using capacitive effect of the PCB strip. Remember that this uh, is about the same as in experiment number one, but you have to come up with some idea on how to measure the volume or the height of the water level based on the capacitive effect. Uh, okay, how can this thing be a capacitive effect? Remember that when you have these two coils which is separated together, you have a resistance between these two when you have water. Water becomes your uh, a medium of transmission from uh, strip number one and strip number two. But then when you have water, you can make this thing as a capacitance by itself connecting these two so this thing will be capacitance but if you do that thing due to the large separation the value of capacitance will be extremely low or if you look at this then you can see there is some gap between the PCB strip so if you fill up the water with this then this small strip will be uh, covered by water and become dielectric and you can measure the capacitance between uh, these two strips so this is the one that you need to suggest for experiment 3 you don't have to do uh, as in uh, experiment 1 but a few measurement is sufficient to get some idea on how to use the capacitive effect of the PCB strip to measure the volume the, uh, uh, or to measure the height of the water level through the height of the water level you can measure the volume in the water okay. uh, there are some ways on how to do it so if you refer on uh, AC uh, characteristic of a, a Wheatstone bridge you can use a Maxwell bridge or you can use a uh, shearing bridge hay bridge oven bridge usually for oven and hay bridge we use when we want to measure unknown inductor and we use a shearing and also Maxwell when we want to measure the capacitance most of the time in my uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 